of the world's biggest seafood exporters. Taiwan has the world's second largest distant water fishing fleet after China. But behind all the fresh catch is the blood, sweat, and tears of micro-fishermen. In this episode of CNA Correspondent, we tell the stories of these migrant fishermen and how Taiwan seafood becomes literally tainted with their blood. gana dun ko na nalaman ko na lang napatay na pala yung isa naming kasama sa kwarto namin nung magtrabaho na sila sa harap nagbaser hindi na nagising yung isa dun ang niyan ano na Siyempre nabigla rin ako tay kasi malakas pa naman yung nagtatrabaho pa sa araw eh tapos bigla na lang namatay Taiwan has over 1000 deep water fishing vessels hiring some 20,000 foreign fishermen from Southeast Asia. They're the main source of labor that supports an industry that's worth billions of dollars a year. But in 2020, for the first time, Taiwan's fishery products were classified as products of forced labor by the U.S. This after a string of allegations that underpaid migrant fishermen were abused and overworked to death. With sunken cheeks and bloodshot eyes, 46-year-old Indonesian fisherman Sabriando was filmed on board a Taiwanese fishing vessel. <laughs> The father of three claimed he was beaten by the captain and other crew members. That was the last image of Sopriano being alive. He never reached the shore. He died while the fishing boat was still at sea. Witnesses said Sopriano's death in 2015 was mainly caused by beating and abuse. But his death did not create much of a ripple. Not until another migrant fisherman died in suspicious circumstances on another Taiwanese ship in 2019. 39-year-old uh -huh. Jaka, not his real name, came from the Philippines. In 2018, he was hired by the Da Wang a Taiwan-owned foreign flag deep water fishing vessel. That's where he met Ramba, the 19-year-old Indonesian fisherman who was allegedly abused to death while working on the Da Wang. Yung ang pagkakilala ko doon sa tao na mabait, talagang mabait na tao doon pala uh, ano siya eh yung laging nag, ano siya yung yung palangiti siya. But the harsh life on the Da Wang soon took the smile off Ramba's face. Si Ramba, baguhan yun. Hindi lang siya yung sinasaktan ng halos yung mga baguhan. Ganun. Pag nagkakamali sila, yun sinasaktan. Kasi nga, siyempre, baguhan sila. Hindi nila alam po yung mga trabaho nila. Ayun nga, eh, yung kapitan naman, eh, sinasaktan yung mga, mga, mga crew na bago pag nagkakamali. Ayun, pa, eh, pamamalo. Tapos suntok, yung batok, tapos yung ano, yung kahit yung sandal na matigas, kukuni niya yun, ibabato sa mukha mo, ganun yung kapitan namin. Sobrang, sobrang bastos yung kapitan namin. The abuse went on for a month. Jaka recalled the night when Ramba passed away. Kasi before siya namatay yung ano, yung, yung si Ramba, Sinuntok ng buso namin dito sa dito sa ano kaya nahimatay yung ano yung yung tao na yun yung, yung tao si Ramba. Tapos nung ano na hindi man la binigyan ng pahinga pinagtrabaho ng pinagtrabaho yung kapitan hanggang doon nung ano na yun. And before siya namatay natulog muna natulog muna siya tapos nung gisingin na namin na magtrabaho na kami yun napatay na yung kasama namin. 
patay na yung tao, yun na marami na patay na kasi may dumugo dito sa ano niya, sa ilong at saka itong ano niya. According to Jaka, the ship did not return to the shore even after Ramba's death. The captain ordered the crew to wrap his body and placed it in the freezer where the fish were usually stored. Official records said Ramba died of lung congestion, but Jaka and other witnesses dispute that. Jaka is now assisting in the investigation of Ramba's death. Ramba's death was first exposed by activist group Greenpeace. It drew attention to what's been going on on these so-called flag of convenience boats. In 2020, the U.S. banned all shipments from Da Wang, the Vanuatu flag, Taiwan-owned vessel in all U.S. ports, citing the use of forced labor, including physical violence, debt bondage, withholding wages and abusive living and working conditions on the ship. Filipino fisherman Jaka told of another incident that took place on the Da Wang. He said he had to help another co-worker who suffered a stroke while at sea, and he accused the captain of refusing to dock the boat and provide him with medical treatment. Yung kapitan walang pakialam basi bigil lang yung gamot sa amin kami nang mag-alaga doon sa nestrop namin kasama. Ganun siya kaano, parang walang konsensya doon sa sa taong may sakit. Eh mas na, mas mahalaga yung isda kaysa yung buhay ng taong ililigtas niya kasi nga nung nangyari yun na sobrang hirap na yung kasama namin Pilipino at saka yung ano ko nung nangyari yung sakit ko na yun. Jaka said he almost died himself from overwork and malnourishment, but the captain still made him work. The thought of his family kept him alive. Taiwan started to bring in migrants to work on its fishing boats in the 1970s. Over the years, as the labor crunch worsened, the government allowed boat owners to hire more foreign workers. It eventually raised the foreign worker quota allowed on any fishing boat to half of the total workforce. Indonesians now account for 70 percent of migrant fishermen on Taiwanese boats, with the rest coming from the Philippines, Vietnam and China. To find out more about what life is like for these migrant fishermen, we managed to get a boat owner to take us on a sea voyage. Zhang Yuwei, our captain, is eager to show the world that the tragic fate suffered by Indonesian fishermen Ramba and Saprianto is the exception rather than the norm. Unlike deep water fishing boats, which typically spends months at sea, this vessel will only spend the night out there and will be back the next day. Tonight, it will be tracking Spanish mackerels in the waters nearby. The workplace fatality rate in Taiwan's fishing industry is four times that of the national average. So it's a job that most Taiwanese do not want to do. 
啊，你毕竟海这种东西大风大浪，有什么危危险性也比较高啊，所以年轻人应该要接触这一行也不不容易啊。But the Indonesian workers on this boat said they are willing to do the job because it pays them two or even three times of what they can get back home. Kerja di sini senang, enak, banyak teman, majikan pun baik, majikan baik terhadap kami. Peduli kalau kita ada luka sedikit, kadang minta sama majikan, minta kasih obat, kadang diberi, pasti dipasti. Saya kerja di sini senang sekali. Saya sudah sembilan tahun kerja di sini. Majikan baik, ya oke lah. Majikan peduli banget lah sama ABK semua dia. Teman-teman yang lain juga peduli lah. Tidak ada. The night's haul isn't great. The weather hasn't been on their side. It's just days before Chinese New Year. The crew will return to the shore for a break before they set out to sea again. As Taiwan's fishing industry grows increasingly reliant on migrant workers, here in Pingdong in southern Taiwan, a small community of Indonesians has called this place home. This makeshift shelter may not look like much, but the migrant fishermen here told me it's been their refuge for the last 20 years. This is where 43-year-old Tan spends his time when he's not out at sea. The Indonesian has been working in Taiwan for the last eight years. Sedangkan di kapal juga kemungkinan kebutuhan air kan berkurang. Di sini ada sumur kompa lah untuk kita untuk mandi, untuk pokoknya serba cukup lah kalau kita mau mandi pakai banyak. Sedangkan di kapal kan terjangkau, nggak begitu banyak. Ya kan, mungkin untuk mandi, cuci muka sedikit sudah. Lah kalau di sini kan mau what they might lack in material comforts, the migrant workers make up for with the company of each other and from afar. Ya, kalau di sini sih enak buat istirahat. Ya banyak teman di sini. Ya saling lah, saling apa itu? Gak apa apa lah. Kali ngobrol enak lah, buat tukar pikir enak. Buat istirahat ya, kayak gitu aja lah. Enaknya bisa ngecas, bisa kumpul sama teman-teman. Masih kabur mana? Ketikan enggak jenuh di kapal. Malam bengi kabur. Ya begitu. Di mana? Kalau ke depan di kapal kan kadang jenuh. Ketikan pengen sama teman-teman kumpul, buat sharing, ngobrol-ngobrol masalah pribadi, masalah di kapal. Orang malah orang belas orang. And from this temporary mosque that's built out of an abandoned container, the Indonesian workers said they always pray for a safe voyage and that they would be able to earn enough money to support their families. Yes, para tan ya kita fokus untuk cari modal lah. Kita niat utama dari Indonesia kan bekerja. This group, Greenpeace, began conducting surveys among migrant fishermen in 2016. Over the years, the group said it has spoken to hundreds of migrant fishermen, both in Taiwan and around the region. Memegang belakang telinga dia seperti ini, tangan kiri dia memegang di bagian paha dia sebelah kiri. 
It was a small sample compared to the tens of thousands of migrant fishermen hired by Taiwanese fishing boats. Still, the activists said what they found paints a disturbing picture. We found that the total is about 6 we found these examples. These conditions and work conditions are not good, or the number of hours of work is about 4 or 5 times. When we talk about how many migrants are suffering from forced labor, how many migrants are suffering from forced labor, this number is not known. Regardless of who we are or any other government agency, it may not be able to speak. The reason is because the whole environment of the sea and the sea is not enough. For example, we are going to look at this today. We can one time Asked a hundred or a hundred thousand migrants. But from the Taiwan Yuan Yang Yu, it's all a mountain in the desert. She said Taiwan's labor law does not protect fishermen hired to work abroad distant water fishing vessels, who instead fall under the jurisdiction of the Taiwan Fisheries Agency. But exploitation tends to happen on these so-called flag of convenience, or FOC boats, over whom the agency has little regulatory oversight. The issue is now getting authorities full attention. In 2019, Taiwan Fisheries Agency started its own field surveys of foreign fishermen. CNA was given access to one such inspection, taking place at Qianzhen Fishing Port in Kaohsiung. It's Taiwan's largest fishing hub, harboring mostly distant water fishing vessels. By interviewing the migrant fishermen directly, the fisheries agency is hoping to detect any issues and intervene early. Each inspector is accompanied by an interpreter, and they will interview the fishermen individually to protect their identity and make sure they feel safe to speak their mind. But there have been questions about the effectiveness of such field surveys. With only a small team conducting these inspections, the fisheries agency so far can only cover 2 to 3 percent of all fishing vessels. In its 2021 Trafficking in Persons report, the U.S. State Department said while Taiwan authorities have increased law enforcement efforts, insufficient staffing, and inspection protocols continue to impede efforts to identify, investigate, and prosecute forced labor on Taiwan's fishing vessels. I met Zhang Shenzhi, Director General of the Fisheries Agency, who told me manpower shortage is indeed a major issue. 2019, Nai 就能够投入这些访查的工作。台湾政府是下很大的决心，愿意在两年之内把所有的船都访问过、访查过一遍。
不只是在台湾的哦。如果它停在国外港口，我们也会想办法到国外去，甚至我们委托第三方的国际的机构去做访查。我们愿意把这些事情做好，就表示说我们很下很大的决心。因为我觉得我们应该是不应该是这样的形象了。那这是台湾有很大的决心要做。To monitor fishermen's working conditions and work hours, the agency is also pushing for fishing vessels to install CCTVs and keep work logs. It also aims to implement a unified minimum wage requirement across the fishing industry to ensure migrant fishermen on distant water fishing boats will enjoy the same pay as the rest of the industry. The agency said its long-term goal is to reduce the number of flag of convenience boats and to bring all Taiwan-owned fishing boats under the purview of the island's labor law in a unified system. But Filipino fisherman Jaka may not be around to witness the changes when they happen. The experience on Da Wang had traumatized him. He plans to leave Taiwan for good, although he still has one unfinished business. Pero sabi ko nga sa sarili ko na na wag mo na kung uwi sa Pilipinas. Tapusin ko mo na yung yung kaso ko dito para para sa ganon. Eh, mabigyan naman ng gusto siya yung ginawa nila sa akin at sa kayong kasama namin Indonesia na patay.